praising the Lord and worrying at the same time. You're going to have a hard time praising the Lord and receiving an evil report. You're going to have a hard time praising the Lord and committing adultery. You're going to have a hard time praising the Lord and, and, and yielding to anything that's wrong. Amen? When you praise the Lord, it causes everything else to get away from you. And that's the one thing that we don't do sometimes when we're facing things in our lives is praise the Lord. That's why God's made it available. That's what social media is all about, guys. It's about God giving you the opportunity to praise the Lord through YouTube, through Spotify, all these outlets here to where you can praise Him 24-7. Amen? And He's raised up worship leaders and worship groups all over the world to bring Holy Ghost-filled anointed songs that you and I can sing when all hell breaks loose in our life. I'm telling you guys, I, we don't have to live a day of defeat ever in our lives. We can live in victory every single day. Because Jesus came and he died on that cross, not just to forgive us of our sins, though that would be great if that's all he did. No, he died on that cross to give us healing, to give us provision, protection. Everything we need has been provided for you. But sometimes you've got to praise your way through it. Amen? And that's why we get together on Sundays and we come in here and we worship and we praise. Why? Because the world's beating us up sometimes all week. You're hearing negativity all week. You're hearing things that ain't lifting you up. They're actually bringing you down. And then when you step into a place like this and you're able to lift up Jesus and you're able to praise Him, guess what happens? All the anxieties and fears begin to take a back seat. Darkness actually goes away. Light comes. Amen? So how many of y'all are already glad you came to church today just to praise Him a little bit? Amen? I know I am. Hallelujah. God is good, and He's good all the time. Glory to God. Well, you may be seated. We're so glad you guys are here to worship with us and, and be a part of the service. Glory to God. If this is your first time here, I want to go ahead and say that. I want to welcome all those that are online as well. But if this is your first time here at Revolution Church, we have connect cards on the back seats there. Fill one out and drop it in that barn uh, box on your way out today. We just want to have a record of your, your visit so we can actually team up with you and let you know, hey, look, man, we're a church alive. Amen. We're doing things and want to do more, and we want you to be a part of it because save people, serve people. Amen. That's what we do. This church is a soul-winning church. Amen. We like to win souls around here. We like to invite people to church. We like to invite people to know Jesus. That's what we do around here, glory to God. And we're going to continue to do it. We're going to do it on a level that nobody else is doing it. We're not looking to have church in here. We're looking to have church out there. Amen. On our jobs, in the store, in, the, in our homes especially. Having some church up in your home, glory to God. I mean, this same atmosphere that you have right here, it can actually be with you all the time. You know, you can actually step out of the living room and go into the bathroom and have some church up in the bathroom. Amen. You can have church in the kitchen. You can have church in the basement. You can have church out there while you're cutting grass. Man, God has made it available, guys. We are carrying God wherever we go. And I don't know about you, I'm excited about carrying God wherever I go. How many of y'all know y'all just say, ain't y'all glad y'all ain't got to wait to church to hear a word from God? Sometimes you're in a position, you need a word right now. And God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm right there with you. Amen. And to me, that's good news. Because how many of y'all, like me, have been in some situations sometimes where you're like, oh, Lord, <laughs> man, I need a word. I need some encouragement. And God, he provides it for us every time. Amen. So anyway, we're glad you guys are here, and I hope y'all are ready to shout and have a good time today, okay? I'm going to encourage you today. God's going to encourage you today. You came to church not to get beat up, but to be encouraged. Ain't that good news? Amen. Amen. We ain't going to be telling you how bad you are, that you're on your way to hell if you don't straighten up. I mean, there's every now and then I'll do that, okay? We, we, we kick it a little bit, but today is going to be an encouraging day, all right? We're going to have a good time. But before we do that, we're also going to give to the Lord, and that is an exciting time, okay? And I want to take a few minutes uh, while they have the ways to give up here, okay? I wanted to take just a few seconds and kind of share with you guys about giving. We started talking about last week about faith in God's Word. That means us having faith and confidence and trust in what God said He would do. <coughs> Y'all agree with me, right? I mean, you've got to have faith in His Word for it to work. If you don't believe He's going to do what He said He's going to do, are you ever going to experience it? No. And does that make God sad? Yes, he's got big plans for everybody in this room. But trying to get his kids to obey him is like pulling teeth sometimes. And it's not like God's trying to get you to obey him so he can take something from you. You serve a very wealthy daddy today. He's got everything he needs, but he's got stuff that you need. And he's made a way to get some of that stuff to you, all right? And he, he, he told us in Malachi, and I want you all to look at this, Malachi 3.10, 
And again, y'all know I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm not out for your money, okay? I'm out to see you blessed. That's what I want to see. I want to see you going and increasing every single day on your job, you know, in the community, wherever you're at. I want to see you being increased in your life. Well, you say, well, Nathan, I'm, I'm doing pretty good right now. I'm not doing too bad. But wouldn't you like to do better? Is there always room for more in your life? Or have you capped out? You, you topped out. This is as far as I want to go. I don't think I'm talking to anybody in this room that's capped out, okay? We all want to do more. We want to have more, okay? Because if you have more, you can do more. You have less, you do less. So God is wanting to get you, Him, and what He has so you can help more people, amen? What if God was broke? What if He was just a broke God, didn't have no power, weak? I mean, He didn't have much. In, he wouldn't have really nobody following Him, Amen? But no, we serve an all-powerful God that has everything. That's why we come is because we want what He has. Okay, if you're sick, well, you want what He has. You want healing, right? If you're broke, you want what He has, and He's got wealth. You need some of it, okay? What about if, you, if you've got you know, a lot of confusion in your life? You've got some anxiety. Don't you want some peace? He's got it, amen? Well, Malachi 3.10, I want to read it out of the New Living Translation. Malachi 3.10 in the New Living Translation. It says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be found in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of... Okay, thank you. Y'all are so good. Hallelujah. I like all the translations, but I really like this, okay? This is God speaking. This is not Malachi speaking. This is God speaking to people, to us today. He was talking to the priest in that day, but this word is for all people, right? I mean, his word don't just go for one group. I mean, if this was going to happen for a select people, well, then I'm kind of jealous already. Why, why is this going to happen for them and I can't happen for me? But it can happen for all of us. He said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. Does God want his house to be full? Does he want his house to be taken care of? Does God want his house to be attractive to, in the community? Or does he want his house to be looking like, you know, it's just a, you know, a bum looking place over there. Scroungy, dirty. When you come in, you're having to hit the cobwebs out of the way just to come find your seat. You know, you go to the bathroom and, you know, ain't nobody flushed it in about three or four weeks. You don't want to do all that. That's not, that's not. You go get coffee, and, and you know, there's, you know, water's got mold floating on it. You know, I mean, nobody wants that, okay? We want to come in, and we want to represent well. You know, David said this in the Old Testament. He said, God, how can I live here and not build you something better? David was in a palace, y'all. He had everything he needed, and he looked out the window at where God was abiding, okay? In that place, they, they would carry God around in a little temple, okay, made with hands. And uh, he said, no, no, this ain't right. For me to be in this big castle and you to be in that little bitty thing there, no, we got to build you a house, and we got to put you in it. And let me tell you something. If you read that story, they raised money. The children of Israel brought so much money that David got to a place where he was like, okay, guys, we got enough. We're good. Okay, we're good. But then Solomon built a house that if you read about it, it was magnificent. It was so magnificent that the queen of Sheba, which was a queen from another region, came to see Solomon and went, what? And man, she unloaded on, that, on Solomon and gave him and blessed him for that. Amen. We want God to have something that's very impressive. Okay. And, and, and he don't, he's not like he's wanting it to be done, but people will be drawn to something that looks good. Something that ain't, don't look good, you ain't going to it. How many of y'all riding down the road and y'all looking for a gas station, okay? And you see a quick trip. And then you see one over there that three pumps are working. There's a guy, I, I, I don't, you know, on his truck, you know, just kind of smoking a cigar. I mean, you know, it just looks rough. Which one are you going to? You're going to the quick trip. Well, I'm just telling you, that's just common, right? We're going to do that. Nice attracts nice okay so we want that to be so he says hey look we want we want the temple to be full but then he says if you do says the lord of heaven's armies i will open the windows of heaven for you i will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in try it put me to the test this is god okay now let me put this in perspective okay i've got all the money in the world okay just pretend, <laughs> pretend, okay, <laughs> you know, but pretend. I've got all the money in the world, and you need what I got. But I tell you, I say, Cindy, look, if you'll just give me 10% of what you got, I'll open up a window over you, and I will pour out what I've got on you. Yeah. That's just a natural illustration. I don't think I would have too many people in this room that wouldn't be takers with that. If you knew I had all the money, I knew, you knew I had all the access to stuff, on this earth, and I just ask you, look, you give me 10%, and 
and I'm going to give you an open window of blessing. I mean, everybody in this room would probably at least think about it really hard and maybe even participate in that. Let me tell you something. Somebody way greater than me or Bill Gates or Klaus Schwab or anybody else in the world has got a lot of money, okay? This is God talking. And he's wanting to do something for us. You know, God, when he created all of us, he created us as willing vessels. That means we have to choose to serve him. We got to choose to give to him. But he set it up in a way that if we'll choose him with our little, it opens up a portal that he can give you a lot. That's God. That's a good daddy. Ain't that how y'all are with y'all's kids? I mean, man, if you see your kid walk up to you and say, hey, mom, I just, you know, uh, I've been working hard. I know y'all been working hard. I know you got some bills and everything, but I I just want to contribute a couple hundred dollars. What's that going to do to your heart? That's going to melt you. And more than likely, you're going to take that $200 and be like, Man, we're going we're gonna to save it or we're going to give it back to him. Amen? And maybe add a little bit to it. I mean, but your God in heaven feels the same way about y'all, man. So I, mean, I just want you to know it's not about Nathan or anybody that stands up here and says, Hey, man, it's time to give. That we're trying to get anything from y'all. It ain't about God trying to get anything from y'all. Man, he made this thing real simple. 10%. You keep 90. But just do the 10 and it's going to open up a, a window where I can give you so much more. How many can testify that that's going on in your life? Amen. You've seen that. It happens. It's real. I mean, guys, I wouldn't ask you to do something that was just not going to work. But you can't just do it one time. you got to make it a lifestyle. Amen. So I want to encourage you. I don't care if you make $100. I don't care if you make $100,000. Put God to the test today. Make a decision that for the rest of this year, I'm going to do what the Bible says. I'm going to put my trust in it. Do y'all believe God's lying to you? Y'all believe God's up in heaven going, uh uh-huh, they gave me 10%, Jesus. We ain't going to open that window. Don't you dare open that window. I see you, Gabriel. You trying to open that window? Don't open it. I'm just kidding with them. I'm not going to do that. Y'all know God wouldn't do that to y'all. But sometimes, you know, we get that. We made $1,000. So we get that $100. And we're like, whew. Man, I don't know if I want to do this. That's a, that's a lot of money. That's a hundred dollars. I'm going to give it to God. And he's going to open up a window and he's going, I don't know about that. That rascal, he may be pulling my leg. We need some groceries. We need to pay a bill. And God didn't know that. <laughs> God knows what you need. He's trying to get you more than what you need. Friend, I'm trying to help some of y'all here today. I, I, it is, because really, your giving don't affect me at all, okay? It affects you. It affects each one in this room. And it, you have to ask yourself, do you trust God or do you not? Again, I mean, if you don't want to give to this church, that's fine. I get it. Give something to something, some other church. I'm not saying you've got to give it here. I'm just saying start obeying God, my friend. And if you'll do it, I don't care. You know, you can be 16 years old and you just got $200 for a birthday gift. Give 20 of it to God. See what happens. I pro- God said, test me. Prove me. That's God of the universe. Oh, man, I wish that preacher would shut up about that money. I don't want to hear about that. Anymore. Look, I'm trying to help you, y'all. I mean, look, I'm not saying this for my benefit. I'm very blessed. I've got money in the bank, okay? I'm blessed. i got stuff paid off, okay? So I already know it works. So I'm not doing this for my benefit, I'm doing it for some of y'all that may not be where you want to be. You may need something. It ain't, you ain't getting it right now. And you don't have to work 15 jobs to have it happen. God will meet you there. Amen. He'll help you. So let daddy be a part of your life. Daughter, son, let daddy be a part of this. Let him walk with you through life and make the decision. I mean, ways to give. You got It's so easy now. To be able to give to the Lord and honor Him. right in your, When you get paid on a Thursday, you can honor the Lord right there in your car. Woo! Man, God, I love you. Praise God, man. Woo! I gave to the Lord. Hallelujah. And see, the devil wants you to think you're, doing, you're losing. You can't do that. You can't do that. What if? Well, then you need to reverse it a little bit. Well, what if it works? <laughs> what if the window does come open? What if he does pour out? Play the, play the opposite of what's been going on in your head, okay? Because, listen, man, it's just temporal anyway. If we all drop dead right now, you ain't taking that with you. <laughs> it's all going to stay here. So whatever you've earned, somebody else is going to spend it. They'll be like, man, Cody's been working long hours on that job of his. he got about a couple thousand dollars in the bank. Well, where's that going to go? 
You're going to get it and spend it. Pastor Nathan dies. Got about $200,000 in the bank. Guess what? I ain't going to enjoy it. That's why I'm enjoying it now. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to be doing when I leave. I'm saying, I don't know what they're going to be spending on when I leave. But no, seriously, guys, let's, let's honor the Lord this morning. And I want us all to stand, and we're going to pray, and we're going to present our gifts to the Lord. And maybe you haven't been given, and maybe you're like, you know what? I'm going to start today. It's easy, man. You can do cash app. You can do all. There's so many ways that you can do this that's so easy now. I know the check writing thing is not really popular on a lot of people's lists. So God has made it available for everybody to be a part of this. And I'm just encouraging you today, be a part of it and watch what happens. I mean, if you'll do it for six months, faithfully, okay, let's sit in and talk after that six months and let's see what I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you guys, your life will be changed forever. Can I get any amens in the house? Y'all agree with that? I mean, it's true, guys. It will happen. So let's make a decision that we're going to do it, not for Pastor Nathan, not for Revolution Church, but because God wants to get something to y'all. Amen? So let's just present our gifts to the Lord. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And I present my gift to you, Father God, mine and Belinda's gift. Hallelujah, Father God. What an opportunity to be able to give to you today. I love you, Father God. And I thank you for this opportunity to bring my tithes and my offerings to you. And I just team up with everybody in this room, Father God, that there's people in this room today that have been faithful in their tithing and their giving. And I thank you, Lord, that that window is opening up and you are doing what you said you would do because we believe it. But I thank you that there's people in this room, Father God, that have been hesitant. They've kind of held back. And I pray that today, Holy Spirit, you will nudge them to go ahead and take that step of faith and trust you. That, Father God, this is going to be, the, these last two months will be the best two months they've ever had in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that they're going to end seeing your hand on their finances and on their jobs in the name of Jesus. So we give you praise and glory and honor for the opportunity to be able to give to you today, Father. We don't take it lightly, but we do, pray, we, we do thank you in advance, Father. That window is open. Hallelujah. And you are doing what you're saying you're doing in Jesus' name. Everybody agree with that? Said amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know we live by faith? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, man, we are going to have some church up in here today. Hallelujah. But before we do, we have a special announcement um, that we have coming up uh, December 3rd at 7 p.m. How many of y'all know we've told you guys and shared this with you guys that our church started uh, basically on Saturday nights? You know, we, we, we didn't call it Saturday Night Life. It was just called Revolution. It wasn't even Revolution Church. It was just Revolution. Uh, because we looked up the definition of revolution, and, and again, it means a lot of different things, okay? So there's a lot of really bloody examples of what revolution means, okay? But we adopted the one that says, you know, bringing an abrupt change, okay? And we wanted to bring an abrupt change, and we felt like Saturday night would be a good night, because how many of you know that young people uh, and older people, it just seems like Friday and Saturday nights tend to be the hot ticket night, okay? That means there's a lot going on, good and bad, on uh, Friday and Saturday night. So we was trying to bring something to the young people. And, uh, man, we've seen a lot of great things, man. I mean, we'd have nine people one Saturday. We'd have 200 one Saturday. I mean, it was just all over. I mean, we just, but we've seen a lot of great things happen, a lot of young adults and people that got touched. Well, again, that is our DNA. So next year, we're actually going to be, uh, this is just what we're going to be doing December 3rd. It's just kind of like a prelude to next year. We have four months of the year that have five weeks in them. And they'll have five Saturdays. So the fifth Saturday of those months, we're going to have what we call Saturday Night Life. And we're going to, you know, we hopefully, you know, uh, have a lot of young adults and teenagers and adults coming out because adults can serve because saved people serve people. Well, I'm busy. Uh, well, <laughs> not if you weren't breathing no more, you wouldn't be busy. Jesus told us, thank you. <laughs> I love Nairobi, man. She, no matter where she's sitting, man, she makes me feel good. I like uh, but again, it's, it's about, look, we're here to win the lost. We're here to help people find Jesus. 
So we're going to be creating a place. And, and again, this December 3rd, it won't be no joke. I mean, we've got a youth group coming out. We've got a lot of other things that's going to be happening. It's going to be a big deal right here. And we're going to actually invest. We're going to be giving away some stuff, okay? We're going to be doing some stuff because young people matter. Amen. Old people matter too, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm in that old group. Hallelujah. So, so we all matter. But again, how many of you know that we need some of these young people to, to, to pick it up and run? I mean, I want some young people, man. I want this whole front section just full of young people. Man, taking notes and looking and man, saying, come on, let's do this. The devil's alive. We're going to go beat his brains in. Because, man, you get these young people on fire. Whoo, hallelujah. I mean, I want to run with them. I'll jump in there with them. I mean, I'll color my hair purple, whatever we need to do. You know, that way I don't stand out too bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but I mean, the point is we're going to go get some people. All right. So uh, I'm going to let Belinda explain a little yeah. bit about it. <laughs> so if you're between the ages of, this is a wide range, okay, 13 and at least 39, but that can be for anybody up to 99, really, as long as you're young at heart, we want yep. you to be here. Absolutely. But from 13 to 39, it's going to be really fun for you, okay? Some of the people older than that, it might not be as fun for them. I don't know. <laughs> might be a little loud. I don't know. But anyway, we need people that are dramatic. So do we have any drama kings or drama queens in here? Raise your hand. Brittany, I'm looking we at you. We already got you, Brittany. I already thought ago. about you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Logan, I actually thought about Luke. you too. Yeah, we've already got Luke. Yeah, we got Luke. We got him penciled yeah. in. So, so yeah. some of you I've already talked to, okay? But we, yeah, Bethany, we've got but I don't think skits. she's going to be here December 3rd. I think. <laughs> oh, man, I love it already. Look at it. She's already believing God for revival. I All like right, it, man. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So but yeah, we you're want definitely to stir this up, okay? And we want you to be a part of it. So yep. it's going to be fun. We're going to have funny skits. We're going to have serious skits. We're going to have all types of skits. And if anybody knows how to dance, we like dancing. If anybody knows how to rap, we cha -cha like rapping. Like that, we like okay. all that kind of stuff. So if you are talented in any of those ways, let me know. Because if you don't let me know, I'm going to come to you. <laughs> Because I think I know some of these people. But anyway, we got some good things planned, and we want to stir up this county, okay, Amen. for the Lord. We want this room to be full of young people, okay, because they are the next generation. And we're going to refer to them as next gen, okay? This is going to be our little cool name for them. Yeah. But anyway, next gen, and there's going to be a lot of fun things going on. So just be a part of it and make sure you're here December the 3rd, unless you are not breathing. Right. Yeah, if you ain't breathing, hey, man, look, man, just, just come on out, okay, because we want you guys to be a part of this. And, again, this is about us coming together to do something. You know, God takes small things and does big things. I'm not waiting no more. I'm going all in. I'm going, I'm, I'm telling you, 2023, if I'm knocking on doors by myself, I'm going. I'm just telling you, like, I'm gone. I'm done. This, this, God gave us Henry County. This is my land, and we're going to take it, okay? And I know as long as I got God, I'm in the majority, okay? So, and I know I have other people here that are on fire, too, but it, it's just time, guys. I mean, you know, I mean, you've heard all of this uh, for the last two years. Uh, they were going to have a baby formula shortage. What happened to that? They were going to have a wheat shortage. What happened to that? They were going to have gas prices at $10 a gallon. What happened to that, y'all? I can't hear y'all. Would y'all help me? Okay, because it ain't time for it to happen. It's time for the church to rise up, and it's time for us to go get the harvest, okay? And God is holding all that stuff back because it ain't time. There's a time it's going to happen, and there's a time it's going to be bad. There's going to be a time there will be a shortage of wheat, and the only way you'll get it is to get a mark in your forehead or in your arm. It's coming, and everybody needs to look around and understand, look, we ain't got much time. I'm telling you, the clock's ticking, y'all. I mean, we, you can play around with it if you want to, but you see the signs of it. If it was up to the government, they would already have us marching in line. What about the vaccine mandate? That was going to be, you know, mandatory, right? Well, in New York, there was a judge that just uh, 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 passed a uh, thing uh, or just made it, I don't know how you want to say it anyway, made a judgment or whatever, that I, I believe healthcare workers and the government workers have to get a year's pay back for the ones that actually said they wouldn't take the vaccine and lost their job. They're getting a year's pay, okay? But a year ago, it was mandatory. You had to have it. There was some restaurants you couldn't even go in. If it was up to the government, they would already have us bowing at their feet and doing what they call us. It ain't time, y'all. It ain't time. There's coming a day it's going to happen. That should let all of us know in this room right here that we don't have much more time before Jesus' feet hit the ground. He's about to come back, y'all. And we don't have much time. So teenagers, young adults, it's time for us to go out and share our faith and actually do what Jesus said. Go witnessing. Go sharing. Okay? We got a big resort waiting on us called heaven. 
We spend so much time down here working. And some people work so hard down here for themselves. That we don't put much work in God's work. That's going to change around here. Not with y'all. Y'all can still, I mean, do whatever y'all want to do. I'm just saying this is what we're going to do as a church. We're, we're, we're gearing up for this. So anyway, with that being said, all of the teenagers, y'all are going to go spend this morning with Miss Belinda. Hallelujah. Y'all going to go spend some time with her. Yeah, don't take the Reese's up. Just leave that Reese's right there, Cody. Don't be looking at it. Well, don't be talking about it. Woo! Come on now. Leave the Reese's there. Y'all give them a hand. Glory to God. I mean, we're blessed. Look at all these teenagers, man. We're blessed. Hallelujah. We love these guys. And she's got a word from heaven. Hallelujah. Now, y'all sitting way too far back, man. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Come on. Y'all can, y'all can scoot up a little bit. Yeah. Brittany, as long as you don't touch my Reese's, you can sit on that front row. <laughs> I know you would. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm serious. Huh? But anyway, um, as they go, uh, I want to go before the Lord in prayer. And, then I, and I got a word that I feel like is really going to encourage some of you guys. So I want you to lean in and just listen to the Lord, okay? Because he has something for you guys. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we are here for such a time as this. This is your hour, Jesus. This is the hour of the church. This is the hour to see a move of the Holy Spirit unlike this earth has ever seen before. And I thank you, Lord, that Revolution Church will not be spectators. We're going to be participators in this end-time move. We're going to be your hands and feet, Jesus. We're going to be those disciples that were in the boat, and you said that you would make them fishers of men. I believe, Father God, Revolution Church is going to be a fisher of men and women, Father. That we're going to be all about souls. Everything we do is going to be about helping lost people find you, Jesus. And I pray that the same anointing that was on you, Jesus, when you was walking on the face of the earth would rest upon us. That we would look at our lives and count our lives as, as nothing, Father, but to count our lives for you to be everything. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. You can turn in your Bibles to Psalms 37. That's where we're going to start today. Hallelujah. But I also want to remind you guys, uh, and she'll remind them out there, but uh, on uh, Sunday, December 11th, right after the service, we're going to be having a meeting with all the young adults and youth and uh, parents. Okay? So if you could uh, stay around, or maybe you want to be a part of helping uh, on Saturday nights or other ways that uh, we're going to reach out, uh, we're going to be kind of throwing out. A, uh, a vision to everybody, uh, to how we all can pitch in, um, you know, and, and really pull this thing together. Because, guys, look, I mean, this Thursday, me, Lori, and Blender are going to uh, McDonough High School. Is it high school? Uh, they're having, what is it called? A community cluster meeting where the principal's going to be there. I think the teacher, the faculty, and all that. Uh, so we're believing God for some connections there of how we can serve this high school. And you may say, well, you know, we're not that big. There's bigger churches in the area. Yeah, and we serve a big God. And we do it, we're doing it by faith, amen? Because, again, those schools need God. And if we just all stay away, then nothing happens. So we're going to go in, and I told Lori, we're just going to go in by faith, hallelujah, and just say, hey, look, what can we do to serve y'all? We're here to serve. We're not here. We don't expect nothing from y'all, but what can we do for you guys? And it may not be a lot at first, but it's a step of faith. Because there's a lot of kids in that school. And there's a lot of kids that are lost in that school. As well as parents that have their kids there. So I just think it's a great opportunity to have a school within walking distance that if you don't at least show some, you know, uh, attempt to try to do it, I think we lose. So anyway, be praying for us next uh, Thursday. We're going to actually be doing that. Uh, and then also the ladies have a meet next Thursday. It's going to be a Thanksgiving gathering. Okay, that means all the ladies, you, you come. Please. And if you're watching online and you ain't got nothing going on, come. I mean, it's going to be a good time of fellowship, okay? And uh, you may say, well, I don't need fellowship. Well, it ain't about you. Somebody else may need fellowship. I mean, come on, guys. We don't live for ourselves. Well, I'm busy. Well, get unbusy for an hour and a half. How? It's not that hard. Come on. Come on out, man. Support each other. You may, you may never know that you walk into a meeting like that and you have a word for somebody. But that word stayed home because of some other things. Don't let it happen, okay? Bring your word and bring your dish. Bring some food. Everybody likes to eat. Hallelujah. We all like to eat. 
Well, anyway, we've been talking about faith in God's Word. We started it last week, and uh, I'm going to kind of go about it a little bit different direction this week because, man, I was just kind of uh, tossing and turning uh, early Saturday morning, and I just had this particular, you know, passage just kind of just going over and over and over in me. And I just, I guess I woke up probably about 4 o'clock and just really couldn't ever go back to sleep and just had it just going over me all, I mean, just continually. I thought, man, Lord, is this what you really want me to share? So I feel like this is from the Lord, and we're going to get into some other things too, but I wanted to just start out with this just to see where we go i mean we may not go nowhere we may stay right here but i wanted to start here but in psalms 37 verse 3 it says trust in the lord and do good then you will live safely in the land and prosper take delight in the lord and he will give you what your heart's desires that's the verse that just kept going over and over and over inside of me take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Now, he goes on in verse 5. He says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him, and he will do what? Trust him. Trust him. That's a big, big deal right there. That's really faith is trust, confidence, believing. But, guys, in this world that we live in, we tend to put our trust in things that fade away. Trust in people that don't deliver, and we get let down. Trust in doctors that can't solve the problem. Trust in things that just don't ain't able to do what we need done. God is the maker of all humans. He knows what you need, but sometimes he's the last one we call. And I'm saying today, your daddy not only wants to give you what you need, he wants to give you your heart's desire. He's a loving daddy that is not withholding anything from them that love him. He's got what you need. It's just sometimes we never go to him and ask him. And then we don't ever do what he tells us to do. Because God's going to give you a word, but in that word, it's probably going to have some action with it. You're going to have to do something. He's going to say, hey, look, I know you're going through some things, and I know you're worried about this. But I want you to trust me that I'm going to work it out. And you say, well, Nathan, what do I need to do with that? you got to be patient. And you got to let him do his part. And you got to talk like he's doing it. Not talk like he ain't going to do it. So again, I know that may not be a physical work, but sometimes holding your tongue is some of the toughest things you'll ever do. I mean, you just, I mean, it's a tongue wants to say things, especially when the pressure's on. Especially when you need an answer right now. I mean, you need money right now. I mean, they're knocking on your door. They're about to evict you. You need money right now. Yeah, Lord, thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you're supplying all of my needs. And you're walking out with your suitcases. I thank you, Lord, you supply all of my needs. You're going to take care of me, Lord. That's called faith and trust in Him. Because if He don't do what He says He will do, He's a what? He's a liar. And we know God don't lie. But sometimes we do not hold God to his word. We'll hold on to it to a certain place. And then we go, "Uh, I guess he didn't hear me. (laughs) I guess he's busy. Hey, uh, Wells Fargo, uh, can I talk to you? I need to get a loan. Or let me slide this credit card. Let me slide this card. We get ahead of God because we're not being patient. We're not really having trust in him. Sometimes, I'm telling you, I mean, you got to trust him all the way down to the last second. And it may still look like you're not winning. But if you'll continue to trust him, he will see you through. He will what? He'll help you. Verse 6, he said, He will make your innocence radiant like the dawn. And the justice of your cause will shine like the new day sun. Who's going to bring justice in your life? You or God? Nah, buddy, we're going to do it. No, 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 God, he, he's got you. If you'll trust him. He goes on to say in verse 7, Be still in the presence of the Lord. And this is what I wanted you guys to see. And wait patiently for Him to what? Act. you got to wait patiently on Him. I know we think He moves slow sometimes. And sometimes we think He don't move when we think He should. But I promise you, God moves when He needs to move. And as long as you'll keep your trust in Him, not your trust in Him for an hour while the praise music's going on. I'm talking about trust Him when you're actually walking through day to day and something ain't changing to your physical eye. Something ain't changing in your physical body. You keep 
walking and trusting in God even when it don't look like it's happening. Because he is a God that never, never lies. You can take his word all the way to the bank and cash it in every single time. So we want to wait patiently for him to act. And it says, don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Well, why do they always get away with it? My God, look at them. They're over there cussing, drinking, adultery, everything else. It looks like their life's going good. Nobody gets away with nothing. And even if it looked like they got away with it while they were living on this earth, guess what they're going to do when they pass away? They got to look to God. Okay, the day of reckoning's coming. But guys, look, we can't look at them and measure what God's doing in our life. Or we can't look at them and say, God, it's working for them. Why ain't you working for us? Don't compare God to an ungodly person and uh, doing ungodly things. Because what he brings to you will be way better than what you ever imagined. I mean, what if Maggie and Victor would have been out there and said, well, by God, you know what? We're going to have another stream of business. We're just going to do it. I don't care. We got to go. We got to go. And man, they just, they saw an opportunity. They just jumped on it. Didn't even pray about it. Just went with it. Would they be giving us a testimony? Probably not. They'd probably be miserable. Okay. But if you let God bring it, then there's peace. It's easy. I guess it is, right? <laughs> I hope it is. But it is. If God brings you what you need, it's easy. It's not going to be a burden and it's not going to keep you away from church. It's not going to keep you out of the house of God. It ain't going to keep you away from being in his word. It's going to draw you closer to him. Amen. God ain't going to give you nothing that draws you away from him. Never, never. That would not be God. Okay. God loves you so much and he desires for you to live a life of no regrets, no sorrows, no mistakes, no bad decisions. Has anybody ever done any of that? We've all done it. And ain't you glad God cares about us and he's not going to beat us up for doing it. He wants to bring us out of it because he loves us. He knows what you did ain't right. You know what you did ain't right. So let's don't spend a lot of time talking about that. Let's get what's wrong right and let's move forward and let God do what he's going to do. Amen. But if we're going to do that, we have to delight ourselves in the Lord. That means if we're going to, if we're going to see God do things in our lives, we're going to have to delight in the, in the Lord. He knows what we should do and shouldn't do all the time. He is the friend in your life that truly does know it all. You do have a know-it-all friend, and his name's Jesus. He does know it all. And I promise you, if you and I would spend more time with Jesus and talking to him, I mean, plain Jane, man, I mean, let's be real. Talk to God. Don't try to come in here with all this Elizabethan, King James language, thinking you got to make all the words sound better. I mean, no, man, be you. I mean, come on. You wouldn't go to your earthly parents and do all that. Mama, thou start. My mother, I need you. No, we ain't doing all that, you know. But yet, when it comes to church, we feel like we got to turn into something. Oh, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Really? Do you talk like that when you're checking out at Walmart? You do not. It blows my mind, man. When you hear somebody praying, they are a total. What? What are you doing? Talk like you do to your husband and wife. Talk. Talk. Normal. Amen? Hey, God, I love you. Now, you do it respectfully. Okay? I mean, I'm not saying you go in there and be all hit. But what's up, bro? No, I'm talking about go in there with respect, but talk your language. But begin to fellowship with God and watch God fellowship with you. He knows what you need. He knows what you've got to have. But he's wanting you to come to him and say, Daddy, well, I don't want to bug God. I don't want to ask God, okay? You know, you hear people say this. You know, I, I give my tithes and offerings, uh, but I don't expect nothing in return. What are you talking about? Your daddy told you to expect something in return. The one you're giving to told you to be expecting him to do something for you. Does your expecting have anything to do with your blessing and increase? Absolutely. He wants to get something to you. But if you have that attitude, well, you know, it don't matter if it happens, it happens, no big deal. No, it is a big deal. God's wanting to get something to you. Because he knows that if he can get who he is and what he has into us, we're going to be able to do what he would do on the earth. But if we're walking around broke as a joke, hurting, afflicted, you know, and just in pain... How much help can we bring somebody? God is wanting to establish his kingdom on the earth. Do you know in order to do that, he's got to get his kingdom into the people that are doing the work down here? So let's be big expectors of God doing things in our lives today. 
Knowing that God just don't want to get you what you need, He wants to get you what you desire. Your very desires. How many of y'all remember the vision list that we made this year? Y'all remember earlier this year, right after the fast, we, uh, we, we created, I told everybody to create a vision list. That means you was to put down everything that you wanted to happen, okay, this year. Uh, how many of y'all done that? Okay. Well, we're going to do it again this year, okay? But I want you guys, over the next month or so, begin to pull out your vision list. Well, you say, well, Pastor, I don't have a vision list. I mean, I just, whatever God does, is I'm okay with it. Hmm. Okay. God said, write the vision and make it plain. Okay? That all who see it may run with it. You want to, listen, be specific. You don't walk into the bank and go, hey, man, I was needing to get in a loan. What you need a loan for? Oh, man, just, yeah, I don't know. Just, I just need some money. <laughs> no, that ain't how that works. You got to be specific. Okay, where did the bank get that from? They got that. All this has been established by God's word and by him, okay? There's nothing nobody's doing out here, you know, legal contracts and all that. God's, he, he's all behind all that. It's all in his word. So we go to God and we're specific. So we go to God and we have a little vision list. Now, if you have stuff on your vision list that didn't happen this year, what do you do? Roll it over. Roll it over. I've heard people, man, that have given testimonies that it took 15 years for them to get what they had on their vision list, but it came to pass. I mean, I've got some stuff on my vision list. I mean, and it's coming to pass. Uh, I got on here, uh, I'll just share some of mine with you, okay? Uh, remodel of kitchen. Happening right now. Uh, deck furniture. It's done. Special vacation with my love. You mean you asked God for that? How dare you? Uh, yeah. And I've had multiple vacations with my love. Paid for. Now, I don't owe no money on them. Paid for Vacation with all the children. Now, that's really need to be under the uh, miracle category. That's under the miracle category. Because I don't know about you guys. We have five children. And <laughs> I don't know. Getting all of our kids to go somewhere, that's, that's a miracle. But it, we're going to roll that over. <laughs> we're going to roll that over. Uh, you know, st stuff like know God more. Be used of God more. That's a vision I have of me. I mean, it's just simple visions. You know, my house getting paid off. Savings account to double. Asking the Lord to double my savings account. What's wrong with that? He's my father. I mean, really? He's my parent. I'm asking him to do something, and I'm putting it down. This right here is, is taped right above my computer in my office, and I see it all the time and just look at it and watch God do things and be able to check it off. God wants us to put our faith in him, y'all. He wants us to put our faith and trust in him to do some things in your life. And don't think that anything you want to do is, 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 is not good to bring to God. Anything. You want new shoes. You want a new outfit. You want new, new... Go to God and ask Him. Don't bug everybody in your house. You know what I'm saying? Man, go to God. Watch Him do it for you. You got some bills? Go to God. Present the bills to Him and say, God, look, I'm asking you, will you help me pay these? What do you think He would do? Again, if I was your father and I had all the money in the world and you came to me and said, Hey, Dad, would you help me pay this bill? Uh-uh. Nah, ain't got time. If you give me a Reese's, I'll help you, okay? <laughs> but no, I would help him. And God wants to help us too. But all he needs is us for us to trust in him. Amen? Trust his word. Joshua 1 tells us this right here. And I love Joshua. And I think Joshua 1 is not only just to Joshua. I believe it's a word to everybody in this room. So we're going to read a few, few verses. It says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, and this is God saying, He said, Moses, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving who? Them. Now, if God gave them land, has God given you land? There's land on this side of heaven that you and I are to possess. And for this church, the land is Henry County. He gave us this land. And we're going to take this land in Jesus' name. We're not going to sit back and go, well, you know what, man, you know, just whatever happens. No, 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 no. We're going to take the same promises that were given to Joshua, given to us. Now, when we get done taking Henry County, we'll spread out. But the same thing with you guys, man. Know that God has put in you the land you're supposed to have. The house you're supposed to have. He's got that in you. Amen? He goes on to say, 
He said, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I'm giving them. Verse 3, I promise you what I promised Moses. This is God now. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness into the south of the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east of the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. He's specific. Is God, you know, just like, well, just wherever? No, he's telling them exactly what's going to happen. And he says in verse 5, No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Verse 6, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. I mean, he says this over and over again. Be careful to obey all instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Verse 8, study this book of instruction. Right here. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. I want to start right there before I read the last verse. This is where it troubles my heart as a pastor. Because I see people going through the motions of Christianity, but yet they're not experiencing what this verse is saying, that your way will be prosperous, your way will be successful. I see in the body of Christ the struggle, the fight, the inconsistencies, and know that, look, you're setting yourself up not to succeed and not to prosper. And that does trouble me. When God said very clearly, if we'll just study this book and we'll do this book and meditate on it and get it in us, like John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it will be given to you, it's not going to happen. God made it very simple, y'all. We just got to get in this book and let it get in us. And then watch God's ways and, and his, his blessings flow in our lives. Amen. And it does, it breaks my heart because a lot of people are, are trying to do things, uh, you know, do Christian things, but they're not seeing good biblical results. And it does bother me, okay? And I hope it bothers you, but the answer is very simple. Study the book, do the book, and I promise you, you will be blessed. He goes on to tell Josh, Joshua, he said, This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If we'll delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give us the desires of our heart. Delighting in the Lord is simply spending time. He brought this book was for us, y'all. He didn't make this book for uh, for Him. He made this book to where we can sit down and actually spend time with our Father every single day, multiple times a day. You can listen to this on the YouVersion Bible app. You can just hit play and let it just speak to you. But you're getting this in you, and this is what's going to change your life. This is what you're going to need to stand on when things in your life don't go the way you want them to go. When you're ready to throw something at your husband, you need to get in here and stand on something in here before you release the object. And I know it's tempting at times. Same thing with the husband, with the wife. Definitely with the kids. Amen? These things, they're there. All right? And if we're not careful, it's the, you see real quickly who you're spending time with when some opportunity to use it happens at your, at your door. You see, it's, it's very visible. I mean, I think sometimes every human should be like a bag of potato chips. You know, when you flip that chips around, it has all the ingredients there, right? And I think sometimes we ought to just look at it and go, okay, they're 10% righteous, 20%, you know, full of God, <laughs> whatever. Break it down. Because sometimes, guys, when we're being tried, if we don't have this in us, we're going to fail that temptation. You're going to fail. And God knows that. That's why he made this book. That's why I say that every baby that leaves the hospital, this should be just as important as the baby. This should be given to every family. Take this home. This is your baby's manual. And put their name on it. And give it to the child. Teach this to your child. But you need to be doing it as well. Don't do as I say. Do as I say and I do. Amen? This is what changes your family, changes your kids, and changes you. It's never too late to get in God's Word. And in His Word is everything we need. That's why it's so important to have faith in God's Word. 
not faith in everybody else's word. Everybody else's word. You know, there's a, there's a time a doctor, he can look at you or she can look at you and go, I've done all I can do. We've done all we can do here. There's nothing else we can do. Is that the end? Is there no hope? Well, see, a lot of people know that in their head, but they don't have it in their heart. Because when they hear a report like that, they have a tendency to start getting in fear. And they start trembling. They get scared. And most of the time, you start thinking about not being here anymore. And then you start talking it. So it's obvious you don't have your trust in God's Word. Because God's Word will never say, I've done all I can do, Dwayne. Tough. Sorry, bro. I mean, I, I'm, that's beyond me. Me and Jesus talked about it last night, and your situation's unique. Sorry, dog. You're on your own. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. You're never going to hear that from our Father. Our Father's always got the answer you need. But He's got to have you having faith in Him. You've got to trust Him. Because if you don't trust Him, you're going to be like a wave that's tossed to and fro. You're going to believe one day. You're going to doubt one day. You're going to believe one day. You're going to doubt one day. And the Bible says, James says, think not that man's going to get anything from the Lord because he's all over the place, okay? We've got to believe that God is and believe he is who he says he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. What does that mean? What is the reward? What you need. <laughs> what is it you need? He's got it, amen? And we've got to teach our kids, teach our uh, uh, friends and family, teach them. Let them see it in your life, Amen? When, when something goes wrong in your life, man, don't get on the phone and call all your relatives. I can't believe this happened. I can't believe it. What? What? What are they going to do? They're going to tell everybody. And now you got a bunch of doubters talking for you, man. You got, I mean, there's doubt everywhere. Amen? No, call the people that are going to build you up. Hey, man, I know you got that report, but let me just tell you something, man. By his stripes, you were healed. He himself took your infirmities and bore your sickness. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you talking like that, man, they get off the phone and go, my God, man, I'm going. I'm just over right now. It's on. You know, you fire. Get people like that in your life. Don't be calling no doomsdayers and doubters and, and teaming up with people at work and want to talk about everything that's negative and bad. No, 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 no. Well, I don't have anybody like that in your life. Yeah, you do. 770-900-0019. Pastor Nathan. Call me anytime. I promise you, you're never going to hear me go, what? I can't believe you're going through that. I've never heard of that. I'll get back with you. Let me call some people. No, no. Because the same God that delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the same God who delivered Daniel out of the lion's den, the same God that delivered millions of Jewish people out of Egyptian slavery is the same God you and I serve. And if he'll do it for them, he'll do it for you. All we got to do is believe him, y'all. All we got to do is have trust in him. Your feelings and emotions could be screaming. They could be, I mean, you could be going, you could be sweating blood. I mean, it could look like it's not changing. It could look bad. But if you'll just stay true to the word. And then you'll have loved ones and family members. Oh, man, tell me how you really feel. Well, man, I'm standing on the word of God. No, 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 all that Bible stuff. Right, tell me how you really feel. Come on, man, tell me. I know you, I know you ain't feeling good. Look. We can rehearse how I feel for hours. It ain't going to make me feel no better. So again, the prescription is, say what you want, don't speak what you have. And I'm not saying we ignore it like it ain't there, obviously. I mean, if you're laying on the floor crying, you're going to have to tell somebody you're hurting. I'm not saying you don't, no, man, I'm healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> no, you tell people. Hey, man, look right now, man, I'm going through some things. I'm not feeling really well. Even if you have to go to the doctor, go to the doctor in faith. Don't go to the doctor, man, doubt. I'm going to be scared. Oh, God, doctor, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I, threw it up. I mean, what? I mean, they give you morphine right off the bat. Shut up. I don't even want to hear it. You know, doctors don't want to hear it. Come on. But no, I'm talking about you looking in the Bible and saying, God, I may be experiencing this, but your word says this. And then go looking through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and all the multitudes he healed. The woman with the issue of blood. Jairus' daughter, he rose from the dead. Lazarus said he raised out of the tomb. Go look at all that and rehearse it over and over again and say, God, you did it for them. You'll do it for me. I ain't dying when no stinking devil flew or de devil anything. I'm going to live and not die to declare your And you stand your ground and you don't budge. Watch what happens. It will change my friend but you got a mean business this is not something you play this ain't like what the doctors do hey uh you know go home and take this medicine for about two weeks but then hurry back because we want to make sure you're going to live and while you're taking this medicine I always notice that there's five pages of side effects i'm serious y'all 
It's a hit or miss thing with, with doctors. And I thank God for doctors. I do. And I use medicine. I've used I love them. Man, without doctors, we may not even be on the planet. There might be a lot of people not here right now. I know there would be. So we thank God for doctors, okay? All I'm saying is, is look, God is wanting you to get off of the training wheels and get over here to where you can actually trust God for yourself and we don't have to look at man's ways. He's got doctors here to help people. Doctors are from God, not the devil. The devil ain't bringing no doctors to help anybody. If it was up to him, he'd just soon do away with doctors. That way when you get a symptom, a headache, and you think it's a brain tumor, and you start talking it all the time, and all it is is a headache, Take the Tylenol, you'll be good. Come on, in faith. Take the Tylenol in faith. Father, I thank you. The Tylenol is not the healer. You're the healer. But I take this. Let it go to the place it needs to go to help. Okay? Don't just dump a bunch of drugs in your body because somebody said so. Well, the doctor told me I need to take these 15 drugs. No, you do your homework, chick. Do it. Check up on that stuff. Don't you just say yes to all that stuff. No, do your homework. I mean, man, you know what they do when you leave? Next. Come on in here. They just forgot about you. You go into the hospital. You go in there with it. You already got your plan together. Like they're telling my wife to go home. She got stage five kidney disease. And they say, uh, you need to go home. I said, no, we ain't going home. <laughs> what are we going to go home for? What am I going to do? Oh, am I going to be the doctor now? No, we ain't going home. No, we're going over there. No, you can't do that. Oh, yeah, we can do that. And we went over there. And we say, you got to be bold. Amen. In love. Don't be being ugly and rude. Okay. But look, man, let God lead you. God will lead you through the medical system just like he'll lead you through the word. God is a God of love, man. And he meets you where you're at. So never condemn yourself. If you're going to the doctor, well, if I go to the doctor, I have a lack of faith. No, you better go to the doctor with great faith. No, you go to that doctor and you say, God, lead me. Anoint them. Anoint those nurses. Anoint them. They use the right stuff on me. No, don't, don't avoid a doctor. I mean, there's so many people that are dead today because they had that theology. Some preacher stood up here and told them, say, man, if you go to the doctor, man, you a lack of faith. You no, 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 no. You'll never hear that here, okay? I'm just wanting to get you guys and myself to a place that we run to the Word before we run anywhere else. Because if we'll live by this Word, we've got a picture in Jesus, okay? How many uh, emergency rooms did Jesus go to? Did Jesus, as Luke was following him around, did he ever go, hey, Luke, Man, my, my leg's hurting a little bit. You check my leg out? We have no record of that. I'm not saying he didn't. He might have. He might have had regular physicals just like everybody else. I don't know. But all I know is what I have in the Word, and that's not in there. So I'm not going to try to imagine something. But Jesus is saying to all of us, I want you all to be like me. He's the model, y'all. Not a pastor. Not a, you know, a, a fellow Christian. No, Jesus is the model. But so many times we're not even trying to, to, to follow him. He's got the remedy to everything we need in life. And I'm just trying to encourage all of y'all guys. Be like Joshua. Be strong. Be co courageous. Study the book. And God's got your answer. Amen? Amen. As we close today, I want to read. Y'all don't have this. But I want everybody to turn in their Bible to Mark. Mark chapter 16. Man, I like turning in the Bible. I want to start doing it more often up here. But we're going to turn to Mark 16. Y'all do not have this, but I know y'all will get it. Mark 16, that's in the New Testament. If you brought your Bible, go ahead and get it out. If you didn't, just use U version. If you don't have U version, download it. Mark 16, as we close today. Because I got a lot more that I could say, but I, I want to stop right here. Mark 16, we're going to start at verse 15. It says, and I'm in the uh, New King James. It says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, trusts, has confidence in, and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. So is there a difference between believing and not believing? Believing gets results. Not believing does not get results. Very simple right there, y'all. It's the words of Jesus, not the words of Nathan. So if we believe, we're going to receive. If we don't believe, we're not going to receive. Condemned means you ain't getting nothing, okay? He goes on to say, verse 17, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly 
uh, thing or anything deadly, it will uh, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get sicker. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Verse 19. So, when, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into the heavens and sat down at the right hand of God. So is Jesus going to be the one going around laying hands on people? No, he's gone. He left. He gave that assignment to his church to do on the job, at home. Your baby ain't feeling good. You lay your hand. Because see what you're doing, you're studying the word day and night. You're doing what Joshua was told by God. You're building yourself up. And see, if you're not building yourself up, I like to tell it this way. And I used to tell the kids in the baseball team, if you're not practicing, your competition is. And it's the same thing with the enemy. If you are not practicing and you're not engaged and studying and working this, your competition is, and his name's the devil. So his plan will be executed towards you. But the, the, the deal is, is we want to have a bigger plan and a better plan to knock it out of the way. And God has that. He has it every time. Amen? Verse 20, he says, And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the company with company signs. So he was confirming the word of God, the word I'm asking you to actually put your faith in with signs following. If he did it, then will he do it for you personally? That means if we use his word in a situation in our life, we can expect signs to follow. If we can expect it to change. We got that from Jesus, the, the, the master. Amen? So what I want to do today as we close is I want to lay hands on the sick. I want to lay hands on you. I want to lay hands on you. If you need something from God, I've got the word of God right here that commissions me to do it. I don't want anybody to leave here with anything that you came in here with. God don't want you to leave. You didn't get dressed up to come here and just sit here. No, God has your answer. And it's high time that we start going to God. And I want you to start here. If you'll start here, you'll do it there. If you won't go to God in this environment, you're probably not going to go to God in that out there. And I'm just saying that, guys. Some of us in here, man, you know, we ain't living for God like we should. We're kind of in and out, one day up, one day down. We ain't really on fire for God. We're not really pursuing God. Today can be your day. All that changes. Maybe you're in this room and you're experiencing some things in your body. You need to go. Jesus healed them all. But what did they do? They had to come to him, right? And nowhere it says, you know, Jesus did go to some isolated cases. But if you read the scripture, it talks about them just bringing multitudes to Jesus. And it says he healed some of them. Some of them were lucky and some of them wasn't. No. He healed them all. You will not find one scripture where a sick person came to Jesus and he said, man, this don't work for everybody. This only works for a select few. And I, I just, you know, it's just God, you know, my daddy, he's kind of, you know, schizophrenic. We never know what he's going to do up in heaven. No, no, it works every time. And if it worked every time for him, the Bible says we're the body of Christ. He's the head, we're the body. If we're the body, what did his body do when he was walking? He laid hands on the sick. Now that's our position to do. Now he's anointed me to lay hands on you guys. Now again, you have to be expecting it. You have to be believing that it's going to happen. Because again, I'm not the healer. I'm not the one that's going to renew your walk with God. But some of you in this room need to get on fire for God. Not for your family's sake. Not for your friend's sake. For your sake. You need it, man. You need it. Fall in love with this Jesus. Make him a part of every minute of your day. I'm telling you, it's not a burden. Friend, it's a blessing. It will be the greatest thing you ever did. And some of y'all know what I'm talking about because there's been moments in your life where you did this. I mean, I, I love small, intimate settings like this because it's really, it's about you and Jesus. It don't matter if you're in a crowd of a million or if you're in a crowd of two. I want you guys to know Jesus is with you. Jesus will help you. He will see you to the other side. But as long as you want to do your own thing, he will let you. But why not just stop that today and let's let God be God. Let's let him do a work in us. Amen. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father God.
then we're going to trust you. We're going to trust your word. And that, Father, you said that you would lay hands, that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And, Father, that's your word. You gave us that word. And I pray that today, Father, if there is somebody in this house that needs healing, if there's somebody in this house that needs salvation, somebody in this house needs deliverance, maybe you, you've been looking at some things and being a part of some things that mean you just, you're saying, I want to get away from it. I want to stop it. Maybe you've been in here and you've been worrying. You know, worrying is just as bad as cancer. If you've got a disease called worry, we want to break that off today in Jesus' name. We don't want you to be carrying that stuff around. God, Jesus said, do not worry. He don't want you worrying. Because worry will lead to other things in your life. Listen, man, I'm telling you, whatever you need, God is here to give it to you. So with your head bowed and your eyes closed, guys, I, I just want you to obey God. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? Do you need to step out and come up here and let Jesus touch you? Not Nathan, Jesus. Because I can tell you right now, the master is here. And what you came in here with, you will never have to leave with it. He'll take care of it right now for good. But I want you to be the one. Because you have to be willing. So that's the whole idea of coming to the front. I know sometimes we say, well, we'll pray for you back there. No, I think it needs to change. I think we need to do what the Bible says. They brought the sick. They brought the hurting to Jesus. And Jesus healed them. Sometimes we got to step out and step two. So as the music's playing, if that's you, I promise you, your answer is here. What you need is right here. And I want to give you time. We got, we got some extra time, and I just want to give you some time. Hallelujah. To obey the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To obey the Holy Spirit. And do what He's telling you to do. I mean, everybody in this room, you, you have the same Spirit inside of you. And, and, and the Holy Spirit could be talking to you today. There's some things in your life you know just ain't where they need to be. And God is saying, hey, look, let me partner with you. Let me help you. Maybe you're doing some things, man, you just don't want to do. I mean, this ain't a confession hour. I'm not having you come up here and confess all your sins to me. Come on up here, Brittany. But, but seriously, just, just step out of where you're at. Step toward God. And let Him do for you what you can't do for yourself. I mean, you think about it, man. You got up, you got ready, and you made all that effort to get here. Why in the world would you want to leave with what you came in with? Amen? And maybe you haven't got nothing. Praise God. And I know there's people in the room like that, too. But I just, I, I want to give you a place and a space to where you can see God move in your life. It could be in finances. It, it, it could be in relationships. Whatever. God wants to touch you today. And do something for you that you can't do for yourself. And we've all been there, y'all. We've all been there. Hallelujah. Thank you, G. If you could just cut the music up a little bit.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are glad y'all came to church today? Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, and he's good all the time. And I just pray for the ones that actually came up here, you received the answer. You received it. Amen. God's word don't lie. He don't lie. So you go rejoicing today. And maybe you were here and you said, you know what, I just didn't really want to go up there. You know what, God will meet you where you're at. Hallelujah. He'll hear your prayer right where you're at. And maybe you leave today and the Holy Spirit touches you and says, hey, uh, you know, really I wanted you to go up there and I wanted to deal with this. Deal with it right there. The Holy Spirit loves you guys. I'm telling you, He loves everybody in this room. But the Holy Spirit sees what's coming. And if we don't prepare our hearts, then our hearts are going to fail. That's why you come to church. That's why you get in the Word. That's why you listen to it at home. I mean, keep the Word of God going all the time, y'all. Don't stop listening to it. I'm saying you can watch stuff too and be a part of stuff. I'm not saying you just you don't do nothing, no. But I'm just saying, look, make God's Word a part of your everyday life. I mean, I listen to podcasts and, and YouTube preachers. Uh, you know, I have a select few. I don't just listen to any of them. But I have a select few that I listen to every day during the week. They build my faith up. They help me. Amen. I got the words going in me all the time. And I promise you guys, it helps me. Because I face things just like everybody in this room. We go through things. But I have seen that I'm able to go through them a lot easier now. Because I'm growing up in the faith. And see, there's another thing, too, as, we, as we, we, we get wrapped up. I want to say this before I pray for everybody. I've said this before, and you know this, that the purpose, your purpose on this earth is on the inside of you. God made you, and he put everything on the inside of you to do everything you was called to do on this earth. And that means go on vacation. That means have a happy family, have a nice house, nice cars. But also it means to actually do the work of the Lord, too, that he has on the inside of you. But do you know? That according to your faith, be it unto you, applies to the things God can reveal to you about your own life. There's some things He's not going to show you because you wouldn't have faith enough to believe to see it done in your life. You would be shocked. Example, Abraham, I want you to leave your country, and then you're going to have a kid, and then you're going to offer that kid to me, okay? If he had said that to Abraham while he was still in the city, do you think Abraham would have left? No. It would have blew his mind. It was too much. Abraham's faith grew into the fact that he could grab his boy and go put him on that altar. There's things in your life and in my life God wants to reveal to us, but he's not going to reveal it because he's a loving daddy if when he brings it to us and he says, Michelle, I want you to do this, and Michelle looks at Dwayne and goes, Ah! Ain't no way! God, you done fell off your rocker. You know, he did that to Abraham and Sarah. Sarah, you're going to have a baby. And Sarah was like, <laughs> she did it. And God said, uh, uh, you laughing? What are you laughing about? You're going to have a baby. She made the correction. And she had a baby. 90-year-old women don't have babies. 100-year-old men don't <laughs> create babies. But I'm just telling you, God was able to reveal things to them. It's a picture of us, y'all. There's things in your life right now that God has not showed you because you're not ready for it. That should fire you up about getting in His Word. I don't want to go to heaven and God say, Hey, Nathan, we got the page one in your book. I had about a hundred, but we got the page one. Because I failed to study and get in the Word. Amen? And build my faith up. I mean, you think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have bowed? When they first got started, no. Their faith was being developed. So whenever that king said, hey, look, we're going to play music, y'all bow to this God. They were able to say, uh-uh. And then they were able to even stay, go further and say, hey, look, you can do what you want to. You can throw us in that furnace if you want to, but we ain't bowing. Forget it. And that's the world you and I live in. There's persecution that is out there right now about Christians that's unbelievable. I mean, you can't even hardly bring up some topics and they go crazy. The media is absolutely going crazy about the fact of Christians' stance against abortion. Some anchors on TV lose their ever-loving mind talking about it. I'm just saying, that's the persecution that we may face. And I say bring it on. Because God's Word is what everybody needs. Whether you like it or not, honey, it's what you need. Amen? 
And we're going to stand up for these things. Amen. We're not going to bow. But I can tell you something, guys. If you do not get in this book and this book get in you, you're going to bow. I mean, we've seen a little bit of that, man, in, in this past you know, COVID deal. There was a lot of people, man, that, you know, for the sake of not losing their job and, and not, you know, not being able to eat. I mean, because some countries, you couldn't even go to the grocery store unless you got the vaccine. You weren't even able to shop. They were only letting a, a minimum amount of people in stores unless you got the shot. And there was a lot of people, non-Christians, that stood and said, no, we ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. And I'm telling you guys, that was just a small picture because the devil thought it was the start of the tribulation. He don't know the end from the beginning. He don't know nothing. He just seen an opportunity to try to get the world to bow to him. It didn't work. But it should be a picture to all of us. It's coming soon to a country near you. And we've got to get built up in the Word. Stand your ground. I mean, in your families. Be faithful to the house of God. Be faithful to share your faith. Knowing that as you're studying, you're not just studying for you, you're studying for others as well. I just want to be a voice in your life to encourage you every Sunday, guys. If you'll do this, it will work in your life. I promise you. I promise you it will. But if you don't do it, it won't work. Okay? And look around the room and you see people that are not here. This is our family. Text them. Call them. Tell them you missed them. Missed y'all today. Did you have something, Emily? Okay. Yeah, get up here. Get, get. I don't have a mic. I'm gonna get you one. Hallelujah. Um, in January, you know, my kid's dad, he passed away. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, his family was grieving so bad that they couldn't take on the responsibility of doing his funeral and arrangements and stuff. So I took it on myself to do the arrangements. And um, my kids, they wanted my older ones. Jordan didn't really know, but um, they wanted him to be buried. They didn't want him to be cremated. They wanted a place where they could go and physically, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, a physical. I'm not going to be that neither. Place. Um, and um, it was going to be $3,400 to pay for it. And I, I didn't have that money. I didn't have that money at all. But. Um, a friend of the family gave us $400, just blessed us with $400. And I was like, well, this is, Lord, I don't know. I was so upset because they mm -hmm. wanted the money that Friday and it had to be paid in full. And um, I didn't know how I was going to get the money. And I just prayed, Lord, I said, I don't, I can't, I can't do this on my own. I can't, Lord. I said, I'm just giving it to you. I put it in your hands. And um, he had gotten a job, and um, he had a paycheck that they had ready for him, and it was a little over $1,000. Um, but my brother-in-law, he called them because he said, I'll call them and I'll get the money. Um, when he, I don't know what made them do it, but they said, we're going to give you two more $1,000. So that was the $3,400. And... Down to the I don't, penny, really. Yeah, yeah and I more. took it there, the whole thing, and I was able to pay it. And, Hallelujah. And then the funeral expenses, they were a little later, but they were paid in full, and I didn't have to. And I don't know, I, God just was wanting me to, to share this well, testimony. Know, let me ask you this. I didn't know if... When you, was, when you asked God for help, did you have 25 scriptures and all kinds of stuff did you did you have a lot of stuff that you was just taking to him or did you just ask him for help well i i guess it was a time when i wasn't like well, I'm just saying, and reading the bible and stuff but i just said lord I, this this is something i can't do mm -hmm. lord i'm giving it to you i'm just putting it in your hands and i can't you basically just talked to him yeah. and asked him yeah okay do you see what i'm saying yeah. i mean she didn't come to him as some theologian she came to God as Emily, needing help. 
and you see what, what happened, okay? Now, Emily couldn't have done all that, okay? But God could. God wants to hear from y'all, and He wants you to ask Him, and He wants you to ask Him big. Don't be scared of asking for something big for God. You ain't going to blow Him out of His seat. He'll blow you out of your seat, but you ain't going to blow Him out of your seat, okay? When I mean, you want to go on vacation, you want to do something nice, ask Him to do it nice, amen? But simple asking Him. I mean, that's just, that's, to me, that is just an amazing testimony. I mean... Yeah, it did. That was good. Really good. Thank you for obeying God. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you did good. Y'all give her a hand. She did good. Hey, uh, before we leave, um, you know, could y'all just get Belinda and all them? Could you get Belinda for me 